Welcome to the Sales Influence Podcast, where we talk about finding the why in how people buy. I'm your host, Victor Antonio, and today I want to talk about the presentation process and how to be more persuasive, how to put a structure together for a great presentation. Now, let's walk through a structure of a great presentation. Now, it's always great to have a great opening, right? You're going to ask a tough question or maybe provide some insight or provide what I call, did you know, information the customer doesn't have. Remember, my definition of insight is information beyond the obvious. So opening a presentation with information that's beyond the obvious, something that makes the customer go, hmm, never thought about that, hmm, never looked at it that way, is a powerful opening. But another aspect of a great sales presentation is that you have to have a narrative, a storyline. What is your presentation about? In other words, what's the key point that you're trying to make? Are you trying to convince the customer that you have new technology and you're leading edge? Is that the storyline? Is that the headline? Or are you trying to convince the customer that you need to kick out your incumbent, you know, the person they're using or the company they're using, and use your product because you're better? That's called a replacement strategy, right? In other words, you're trying to convince them that you have something that's better than what they're currently using. Figure out what your storyline is. Then, like any good headline, you have to have supporting content. So what are your three main messages? What are your three proof points that you can show the customers? Hey, here's why we're better. Let's say that we're going that we're leading technology. That's our angle going in. Then your, my question is, what three key messages do you want to reinforce, bang away at, that the customer gets it? In other words, if you give them too much information, it's going to get convoluted and complicated. But if you have a nice narrative, we're better than the competition because our product is leading edge. That's the narrative. But then if you just have three key messages supporting that narrative, that makes your presentation that much more powerful. Also keep in mind that as you're going through your presentation, maybe you'll have to do some type of demonstration, show them your product, show them how your service works, maybe show them something for them to really start getting comfortable with buying your product or service. And then let's not forget social proof. These are things that you're going to have to show the customer to prove to them that what you're saying is absolutely true. For example, you may want to show them a case study of a similar customer in that industry, in that market segment, who use their product and here are the results that they achieved. Case studies are always great examples of social proof. So what can you show the customer to convince them that what you're saying is real? And also keep in mind that as you're doing the presentation, you're always, you're always thinking about the outcome. What's the outcome? Once I'm done with the presentation, what's the next step? Now, this is important. Let me slow down here. This is important. Every time you do a presentation, it always begins with the obvious end in mind. So what is the end? What do you want to have happen when that presentation is done? You need to have that clearly defined in your head before you even put together the presentation. In other words, you know you're going in there to talk to the customer. What is the desired outcome? You need to know that ahead of time because knowing the outcome will allow you to build your presentation with that end in mind. Now, as you move through the presentation, remember, it's all about reducing resistance also. See, your customers have reasons why they don't want to buy, objections in their heads that they don't want to buy. And your job is to reduce, if not block those objections, in order to get them to start thinking about buying your product. Now, if you've seen my series, Blocking Objections, you know what I'm talking about. If customers typically have, on average, three to five objections, then you need to address those objections during your presentation. Do not wait for the customer to raise those objections. You raise them, and because you raise the objections, you control the conversation, and that's a great way of presenting. Last but not least, remember... We have an outcome, and the outcome is we desire to do something at the end of this presentation. We want the customer to execute on this. So as you're moving towards your close, you're going to have to start asking for what I call commitments. In other words, you're going to have questions that you're going to ask that move the conversation forward. Now, all this is fine and dandy. You understand the sales presentation process. It starts with a structure, a good opening, right? An attention grabber, some did you know information, some key insights, information beyond the obvious, things they didn't know. Then we create a narrative. 
Then we create, that's the storyline. Then we have supporting messages to support that narrative. So for example, again, if your narrative is that we're new technology, we're leading edge, then that's your narrative, your storyline. You're gonna to have to have at least three key messages to support that storyline. You're gonna to have to do a demonstration. You're gonna to have to show some social proof. Things that you've done with other customers to prove to your customer that what you're saying is absolutely true. And during that presentation, you're gonna to have to find ways to reduce resistance. In other words, customers have objections, you're gonna to have to find ways to reduce that objection as you move or objections as you move through that sales process. Last but not least, you gotta close. And the best way to close is to begin towards the end to ask commitment questions. You know, Am I showing you something that is of interest to you, Mr. Customer? Does this seem like a fit? Does it seem to have the features and the functions that you desire to make your company better, grow faster, increase revenue, reduce costs, whatever it may be? Based on what I've shown you, does this fit within your budget? These are commitment questions that you pepper throughout your presentation, but really start hitting hard as you come to the close of your presentation. Now, all that said, I want you to keep three big questions in your head because these are the three questions that the customer is always asking themselves. Question number one, why should I change? Why change? Victor, I'm happy with what I got, why change? And you're gonna to have to answer that question. So if I pose that question to you right now, if I asked you, why should I change? You're presenting to me and I ask you, well, why change? What would you say, what would you do? What would you show me? to let me know that I really need to make that change. What can you demonstrate for me that will make convince me that I really need to change? Now, if you can convince me of that, then the second question I have in my head is why now? You know, why do I have to do it now? Maybe I'll just defer this decision until you know, another six months to a year. Why do I have to do it now? So when you're talking to a customer, I want you to keep that question in your head as well. How do I convince this customer that now is the time to make that decision? I ask you the question again, what would you show them? What would you tell them? What would you say? What would you show them to convince them that now is the time? See, I need you to start thinking about that because getting a customer to agree that change is needed is one thing. Getting them to agree that change is needed now is a totally different script. So you need to not only create the need for change, you also need to create the need, a sense of urgency that this has to be done now. So now let's say you've gone over the first hurdle. You convince them that change is necessary. You've convinced them that now's a good time. Last but not least, the last question remaining in their head is why you? Why should I buy from you? What, what would you say, what would you show them to convince them that you're the right choice? Why you, why your product, why your company? What would you say, what would you show them? I need you to start thinking about that. You understand that you have to have a presentation process. Just talked about that. But during that presentation process, you really have to answer those three key questions. Why do I need to change? Why should I do it now? And why you? If you can answer those three questions, a customer is more likely to say yes than no to your sales presentation. This is Victor Antonio signing off and always reminding you that selling ain't hard when you know how. Take care. Every manager can feel it. The difference between a motivated, value-driven sales team and one that's stuck in a rut. CEOs know the difference too. They can see it clearly in the profit and loss columns. The question is, how do you get your team to this elite level? Is there something extra you can do to break through the remaining resistance and equip them with the right mindset to grow your business? Yes, there is. But you're not going to do it with one of those cheesy inspirational speakers or some self-proclaimed guru. What you need is someone with a real business track record to deliver key insights in a captivating way, to give your team the right tools for selling in today's tough marketplace. Enter Victor Antonio, experienced executive, innovative thinker, compelling speaker. He's ready to deliver the message you need your people to hear, not with a canned speech, but a customized dynamic keynote designed to deliver results. Bring Victor Antonio to your next event before the competition does. Go to www.victorantonio.com for more information.